This lesson is about using engineering notation and metric prefixes for work in electronics. Uh, you need to know that all engineers and electronics technicians use uh, engineering notation and these metric prefixes to help make very, very large numbers or very small numbers much more understandable. Let's say we take a number, for example, 506 million hertz. Say this is a radio signal that someone's receiving. No one would say uh, that they're receiving a signal at 506 million hertz. Instead, they're going to use one of the metric prefixes and convert the number uh, to a uh, engineering uh, notation. So, to convert from a standard or decimal form number to an engineering notation, we need to remember our metric prefixes. Now, if we, in engineering mode, we only use uh, the metric prefixes that come in multiples of three from the base, three places to the left we would eliminate three zeros and then use the uh, letter K to represent kilo. That's three places to the left. If we move another three places to the left, so it's a total of six places, we use the term mega. Now we've gotten rid of six zeros. We use a capital M to represent mega. Not three more z uh, places to the left if we eliminate three more zeros. So now we've gotten rid of nine zeros. We use the prefix giga or capital G and 12 places 12 zeros eliminated is Terra or capital T. Now we can also go smaller if we take three places to the right if we move the decimal three places to the right instead of point zero 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 some number we get rid of three zeros after the decimal place just move the decimal place over and we replace that with the prefix milli or little m Another three places to the right, getting rid of three more zeros after a decimal, we get micro, or what looks like, uh, kind of like a U, it's actually the Greek letter mu. Another three places to the right, and we have nano, or little n, which is not used very often in electronics. Instead, the term pico is used, or a, a lowercase p for pico. So these are the metric prefixes we're going to use. So imagine if we're going to start with our decimal place here at the end of all these zeros, we can eliminate three zeros, move our decimal place over three places. Uh, we still have zeros, so we can eliminate three more zeros, move our decimal place three more places over, end it right there, and we have 506 hertz. We replace the zeros with the prefix that stands for six zeros, and that would be megahertz. So 506 megahertz. Let's do another example. Here we have 147,560,000 hertz. Instead, let's eliminate those three zeros, move our decimal place over, move our decimal, eliminate this other zero, and move our decimal place over three more places. So we end up with 147.56. We've moved six places, so I'll replace that with a megahertz. Let's do another example. If we have 38,560 ohms, remember our decimals at the end of the number, if we move that decimal three places over, we can replace all those zeros with the prefix K for kilo ohms, so 38.56 kilo ohms. Here's an example going the other direction. If we have 0.00000000347 farads of capacitance. That's a, a lot of zeros. Let's eliminate those and, and use a, an engineering notation. So I'm going to move my decimal point three places to the right, cross out three zeros, three more places to the right, cross out zeros, three more places to the right, cross out zeros, and I'm going to move it three more places to the right and end with my decimal point there and now I just have to remember the prefix that stands for 3, 6, 9, 12 places is picofarads. Now I could have said 0.347 nanofarads, but electronics technicians don't use the term nanofarads. Most often they report it as picofarads or microfarads. So that's how you use engineering notation and metric prefixes to make very large numbers or very small numbers simpler to understand.